Hello, hello, hello. Today for me is October 21, 2021. Solutions to problem 121. The radio interferometer. Two telescopes. Distance apart 800 meters. And the wavelength that we use is six centimeters. I derived that the concept in great detail in my lecture 21 of 803. You see here at the top the interference pattern as a function of angle. This is the zero order and this first order and first order. That separation is always lambda divided by d if d is the distance between the telescopes. This is also lambda over d. If you had n capital N telescopes, the number of zeros in between zero and first order would be n. And in my lecture, I show you an example for n equals 4. Here we have n equals 10. Therefore, the width of each order becomes extremely narrow. The larger capital N, the larger the number of telescopes you have, the narrower it gets. If n is 10, then it is two and a half times narrower than when n is 4. That's the whole secret of interferometers. At the bottom, you see here the separation that two sources would give you the best separation possible. Source 1 and source 2. If source 1 has its zero order here, then source 2, which can just be separated, will be at the angular distance of lambda over 10d, which is here this minimum. If they are closer than that in angles, you cannot separate them as two separate sources. Notice that the diameter of the disks does not enter into the picture. If the diameter is huge, you get a very strong signal. If the diameter is extremely small, you would hardly see any picture because the whole system would be in the noise. So we leave that in the middle here. It doesn't depend on the diameter of the telescopes. So here you see the answer of the problem, 10 telescopes, 800 meters apart, wavelengths 6 centimeters. It was a problem on the final exam of 803. So you can find it there. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel, I meant to say. Solutions are also always given. You can find the problems and you can find the solutions. Lambda over d, which is the separation between the orders, is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 5 radians, which is 15 arc seconds. So you see that under b, that the distance between first and zero order is 15 arc seconds. 
Now comes the beauty if you have 10 telescopes. Then the angular width of all the orders becomes 10 times smaller. It becomes lambda divided by 10d. And that is only 1.5 arc seconds. 1.5 arc seconds. The angular resolution <coughs> of a human eye, of course we can't see radio waves, <coughs> but that's a detail now, is about one arc minute, which is 60 arc seconds. So this radio telescope would have an angular resolution, an angular ability to separate two sources, two sources apart, which is 40 times smaller than what your eye could do. But of your eye could, of course, only see visible light. But it shows you the power. The more telescopes, the larger the distance, the higher the angular resolution. In my lecture 21 of ADO 3, I test the angular resolution of the eyes of my students. I have two pinholes apart in a screen and I adjusted that in such a way that only the students who were close to me would see the sources as separate sources. In other words, for them the sources were a little bit more than one arc minute apart. But for those in the back of my audience, the angular separation would be much smaller than one arc minute, and so they could not tell that there were two individual light sources. The power of interference patterns is enormous. This has been a breakthrough, of course, in radio astronomy already for many decades. Google interference patterns of arrays of telescopes and you may learn a little more. The number of solutions, correct solutions, is very, very low. I think fewer than 10 have it right. It means this problem was way above your level and therefore it was probably also way above JEE advanced level and that disappoints me because surely uh, this should be within reach of people who pass JEE advanced exams. If you can't do it, I suggest you watch my lecture 21 of 803, you will learn some very interesting physics. I discuss their gratings, which are in a way multiple light sources or light reflectors. And I show you demonstrations whereby I resolve with gratings spectral lines of the various gases. I think I do it with helium and with hydrogen, but I don't remember exactly. So don't feel bad if you can't do it. If you have any desire to learn physics, most of you do, many of you don't, watch lecture 21 of 803. Whether you do that or whether you don't, makes a big difference to you, makes no difference to me. We'll be friends anyhow. That's always a given.